Hello and welcome to this Microtask Shorts video where we're going to be looking at the bit banding on the Kinetis Cortex M4. Beware that this is not a video for absolute beginners. I'm assuming that you are aware of the presence of the bit banding region and the capabilities of the Cortex M4 core to use this to set or clear individual bits in SRAM or in the peripheral area. In case you need a basic introduction to bit banding, there are various documents and videos on the internet which are quite simple to find. I'm going to be concentrating here on register modifications, things which are done very often in embedded projects. What I'm going to show is the use of macros to make the operations easy to manage and also to make them portable. In addition, I'll be looking at the code size and speed advantage and also further advantages of the use of bit banding in real project situations which have major potential advantages. We start with very typical code. In this case we're going to be setting the clock to the ADC0 in the Kinetis part and this is typical code to do it. These are the associated defines which allow this to operate on the chip. There should be nothing here which is unusual or specifically new to general embedded programmers. Now I'm going to show you the method which is used in the Microtasker project and the macro involved. This is the way that it's done in the Microtasker project. This equates to whereby this is defined in a header file to be specifically the address required to use bit banding to set the bit involved. The register location is defined in the header as such, whereby the bit banding peripheral address is calculated by using the standard ARM Cortex formula. This takes the address which is going to be modified and the bit in the long word and calculates the address required to do this. I'll move up these general defines to make a bit more space. We can leave them here as reference and we can now continue the expansion process of our power up atomic macro. And the next step and finally I need to introduce the macros which do the final work. These are the macros to set and clear the bits. I'm going to move these up as well so that they make space for the next step in the process. Now we're substituting right down to the register addresses themselves. To be absolutely complete I also need to show that the cast pointer arithmetic is simply unsigned short because the Cortex M32 is 32 bit. So I'm going to add this up here too. And now we get to the very final step. And there we have the instruction or the address which is written with a 1 to get the operation that we require. That is to set an individual bit in a specific register which in this case which enables clocks to the ADC in the Kinetis device. So the first question is what is the code size and speed advantage of doing this against the original technique of doing a simple OR? So what I can show you is a decent compiler's effort of compiling the first simple basic method. This is pretty much what it looks like. So what I've done is I've taken a pretty decent compiler and I've seen what it does. This is the original case. I'm not going to discuss the assembler code, but what we do see is it's taking four instructions. Here we can see the OR taking place after it has read the original value. And then this is the final store of the new value. And now we can compare the second case using bit banding. What we find out is that the compiler has actually been able to save one instruction. Here we see the load of the absolute address for the bit banding write operation. 
Here we're loading the one because we want to set the bit and this is the access to set the bit. So the result is the same but we've required instead of four instructions, three instructions. Now the thing to mention here is that although we've got a fairly complicated uh, set of macros, it's the compiler which is doing all of the work for us. The values here are all constants, which means that the compiler will do these steps and result will be a constant value to be written with a 1, which means it's in fact very efficient. Now what I'm going to do is to show you a different typical case. Now this code here is setting a bit, but we have a variable controlling the situation. The subroutine will probably accept this variable as a parameter, which means that the bit location has to also be calculated before the bit can be set. And again, this is the way that the Microtasker project makes use of macros to do the same thing in a potentially more efficient way. So I'm going to remove the first example expansion here to make space for the second one. Here we see the macro involved. Notice that we're reusing some of the sub macros as well from here. So as I did before, I'm going to substitute until we get to the final result. This macro can be expanded to this. The next expansion step is so, which can be followed with expanding the atomic set register macro I get moving to the absolute register locations I get, which then simplifies to so, and assuming that at runtime the channel number was seven, this is the final calculated address. Now, as in the previous case, I'm gonna show you what the final instruction codes look like. Now, this is the original traditional case where we're gonna set a, an individual bit. This, I believe, has the channel number in register R0. It has to shift this into position, and this is the OR, and this is the final right back. And the comparison with the bit banding case, here we see that the compiler is actually being able to save two instructions. So instead of six, we now require just the four. So what we've seen is that the use of these macros, although it looks fairly complicated originally, can uh, reduce the code size and the efficiency, obviously. But there is a huge further advantage of using these techniques, which I'm going to show to close the video as such. To show this, I'll start by looking at the code involved in this case. Now remember, what we're trying to do is to take the original value, change it by adding a 1 to it, and then writing it back. If we look at the code, we can identify that this is where we take the original value. And after manipulating it, we write it back here. Now the potential problem is that you might have an interrupt in your system, which is also accessing this, and also modifying it. Now the problem here is that if an interrupt arrives between here and here, before it's been written back, the original value which you're trying to preserve and add your bit to will not be exact. What will happen is that the any modification which is made by the interrupt will potentially be lost. Now that can have disastrous consequences in a normal embedded operating environment. So if we look at the second case here, we're not reading this value anywhere. All that we're doing is we're telling the bit banding engine that we want to modify a bit. Now in this case, the uh, instruction itself will guarantee that there's no potential of an interrupt arriving during this operation. Now, what you often see in, in, in systems is something like disable interrupt and enable interrupt after here. Now that solves the situation because it 
stops any interrupts arriving between this very critical set of instructions. However, beware because nowadays a lot of microprocessors are making more and more use of very powerful DMA techniques. Now, the Kinetis um, M4 processors, they have a lot of DMA capabilities, which has a potential for you to improve the performance uh, dramatically. That means that people are using DMA a lot. Now, this will not protect this from a potential DMA channel accessing this register and modifying it, which means that, in fact, you've got, you've got no protection against that. In this second case here, we can see that we never need to protect against interrupts. And also, a massive advantage, we also do not need to protect against DMA, which is basically more or less impossible apart from system design not actually using it. Now it's interesting that I read many forum posts which begin with something like, I have developed a software, it runs perfectly, but every two or three hours my system crashes. Well, I don't really know whether that's perfect software, but such race states are potential issues in today's modern embedded systems. The problem with such situations are that they're quite difficult to reproduce, they're quite difficult to find. Now, when your products get out, into the market with such potential issues. That can be quite disastrous. First of all, your products are going to get a bad reputation. Secondly, your company is going to get a bad reputation. Thirdly, it potentially costs you a lot of money to identify and solve. Using these bit banding techniques wherever possible can not only increase the efficiency of the program, reduce its program size, but also it can protect you against many of these critical situations which result in product unreliability.